G'day, g'day. Welcome to Easy Jeezy, Map and Made Breezy. Now, I've got to be really quick because I've just got to finish washing my clothes. I, I spilled some really nice bolognese sauce all over my shirt and my, uh, my shoes, my, my new shoes, that is. So um, this is just a quick guide on making some bivariate or even trivariate maps. It's basically maps that, that uh, display uh, multiple variables at the same time. Okay, so we're going to continue on with the data we had from previous guides. In this case, we've got our interpolated raster of uh, noise levels. So these uh, colors from green to red, uh, this image in the background, and we've still got our uh, original points over the top. The points aren't showing anything at the moment. So at the moment, we've basically got one variable, just noise level displayed here. And what we're going to do now, we're going to look at how you can show multiple uh, variables, okay, some different ways. So first way, let's, uh, let's add our points back in, okay? And what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, click on it and let's go right click, sorry, and go symbology. Okay, so here let's do, uh, basically what we can do, we can just do what we did with our point data previously. In this case, let's do it by graduated symbols, okay? Uh, and go through the same motion. So field, in this case, we want to see what we want to compare noise level with. So maybe it's a uh, private car count, okay? Um, and then basically what it's doing, you can see how it is here. It's overlaid the uh, private car values. So you can see when there's a bigger circle, there's more cars uh, on, on the top of the noise uh, level. So you want to see if there's any sort of correlation there between the two, maybe spatially. Um, and again, you can play around with the minimum size. Let's make it a bit bigger so we can see. More easy to see. Let's make the maximum size even bigger. Let's get a better idea of the spread. Okay. And again, you can change the number of classes, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So, oops. So down. It's pretty self-explanatory over here. Okay. So you've got the circles representing uh, the private, the number of private cars. So you can see where there's more private cars, maybe there's more noises, more noise in some in some areas. That certainly seems to be the case. Okay, so that, that's already quite an interesting map. So this is a simple bivariate map. Okay, so you're showing two variables. Okay, noise and uh, and private cars. Um, you could also change that to a, a graduated color map. Going back into symbology. and choosing graduated colors, okay? And maybe you want to choose the same thing, okay? Uh, let's, let's do bicycle count, okay? And then you can do it by colors, uh, you know, the motions, go through, say, okay, I want, uh, maybe greens is not a good choice, maybe it's better to do blues. Uh, greens obviously gonna blend in with the other thing. The background, uh, format all symbols, let's go to properties, let's make it big again. See how it looks there. So you get that idea as well. So you can do you can do uh, you can do that. Um, let's go back for a second, and I'm going to go back and go to graduated symbols, and I'm going to uh, when it kicks in, I'm going to go down to private car count again. Okay. Um, so here are our graduated symbols like we had previously, maybe bigger. Um, so there's your bivariate map. You can also actually make a, a trivariate map if, if you like. can get a bit confusing, so it's not really recommended all the time. But if you click Vary Symbology by Attribute, this little green tab up here in Symbology, you can see you can also vary Symbology uh, by Transparency. So you can make certain values of another field uh, more transparent or less transparent. You can also rotate them. So that can come in use if you're looking at direction. Uh, and you can also adjust them by color. Okay, so let's look at the color one for this one. And our field in this case, let's do, let's see, overall social class. Let's do that. Okay, and so what it's saying here is, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, higher value, okay, a higher social class in this case, gets a darker blue, and a lower social class gets a lighter blue. So you can, uh, at this point, you're comparing three different variables on this map. You've got your raster layer in the background comparing, uh, showing your noise value, okay? You've got the size of the circle showing your private car count, and you've got the colors of the circle showing your social class, darker 
blue meaning a uh, higher social class. Okay, so that's uh, one way of making a bivariate or a trivariate map. Um, you may also, there's another way now in, in, uh, in uh, ArcGIS Pro, which is quite nice. If you click on the sample points and go symbology, so we go it again, let's go back to our symbology. Okay, there is actually another option which is uh, a bivariate colors. So let's click on the bivariate colors. Okay, now uh, what you get here is you get um, you get uh, this sort of this sort of scheme here where you've got uh, low to high in one variable going from sort of a, this gray to, to pink and low to high going another variable going from gray to blue. And then you've got the mix uh, the mix of the two variables. So when uh, one variable is very, uh, or sorry, when both variables are very high, it becomes this sort of purpley color. When uh, just one variable is high, the other one's low, it's either blue or pink. And then where it's somewhere in the middle, it's sort of a merging of those two colors. So over here, let's choose, uh, what did we have before we had, uh, let's see, private car count as field one. Now field two was a social class. Now actually this might not work so well with these ones because the actual uh, symbols are quite, uh, quite different. Um, but there you go, you get those, you get those colors represented uh, yeah, there's colors represented here. Uh, you can change the labels down here. Okay, so where you got the fields, you just take off the ZE and overall social class, you take that off as well. You change sort of the orientation um, and you can have a look at, watch it, let's go. My template there, and let's make it a bit bigger so we can actually see these colors, let's say 17. There you go. Okay, so now we can actually see those colors. And what, what you're getting here, you're seeing, okay, pink, for example, means really high private car count, but uh, a low social uh, social class, okay? The dark purple means high of both, okay? And these light blue colors mean it's a high social class, but there's a really low car count, okay? So again, in this case, if we leave the raster in the background, if we leave the noise level in the background, it's a trivariate map, but we can obviously take that off and have just a bivariate map there, showing those two variables represented here at these points. Okay, uh, you gotta be careful with these. It doesn't always uh, work out so well, it doesn't always come out so uh, clean and uh, easy to understand. So you do need to be careful. The color schemes as well can be a bit restrictive. Not all of them are, are really that good or intuitive. The default one generally is, is the best one there. Okay. Um, and I said, you can play around with the field names and stuff here in the legend tab. Okay. That's it for bivariate and trivariate maps at the moment. I hope it helps. See you next time. Ciao.